This is a marathon, not a sprint. Let's get the brightness up a bit, there we go. So, the breach of the city, shall we say city gates? Uh, it'll, it'll come when I'm doing the title, but the breach of the city, something like that. It's basically the mind. As a man thinks, so he is. Our mind, our thoughts have such a power, are so integral in how people are feeling, how people behave, their actions, their words, all of this. And we need to have the mind of Christ. What, what does the scripture say about the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but took on the form of a servant. Jesus was low, he was lowly and high, he was humble, he was gentle, he was meek. Now there were times where he went off on guys, he went off on the Pharisees and the hypocrites and all that. But his, his uh, we'll say his, the, the, the default state of being was gentle, kind, loving. Look at the fruits of the Holy Ghost, that, that, is, that is how Christ is, his character. And what do the scriptures say about the carnal mind? To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we have to be spiritually minded. We have to have the mind of Christ and we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. There is a spiritual nature and component and aspect of our mind. The spirit, the pneuma, the breath. We think in words, we think in images, we think in ways like that and God can speak to us in our minds and we can think things and we can pray in thought as well the mind is a deeply powerful thing and this is why Satan attacks it so much Jesus when he was fasting for 40 days was attacked deeply in his mind and if this battle guys is in the mind isn't won everything else is going to be ineffective because the mind is like the foundation of, of how we operate. Now, Christ is the rock. And as a, as a Christian, we're meant to be founded in Christ. But then Christ is still going to be operating through us, through our thoughts, which will then, you know, feed into our feelings, will feed into how we think and talk and behave. So, all of this is integral, guys. And having the mind right means that what will then flow out of that, if you've got the mind of Christ and you're allowing Christ to govern your heart and your mind and you're guarding your heart with all diligence, you're not allowing nonsense in and you're taking captive every thought in obedience to Christ and you're allowing Christ to just mould and shape and mould and shape until you're ready for the good work he's called, called you to. This is a lifelong process, guys, but we need to have that mind of Christ. And we need to pursue this. We need to pursue this. And we need to allow God to move in in this. And what I'm noticing that God's been doing in me recently, I said it in a previous video, God's showing me his love and he's showing me that, yes, fasting's good. Yes, severe, like heavy study is good. Bible studies preaching, evangelism, outreach, all this stuff, it's good. But I need to be changed within me more because otherwise I'm doing things out of performing for God, out of fear that he won't love me. And that's wrong. So God is showing me that he's the one moving. Like with Joshua, he went before and just they took over the city. And all these amazing things happened. So many battles, God just did things. And he was like, look, I'm going to make it seem like the odds are well stacked against you. And this is the God who we serve. Because they won those battles where they truly trusted in God. This is what we need to have, guys. And it's only going to be through humility, through accepting that we've not got it figured out. Or in some cases, accepting that there isn't a true, genuine unfailing love of God yet 
and that can only come through God moving in us and through us being receptive to that and wanting that and being open to that. So allow God to affect the deepest part of your being. Five minutes, 14. I think that's it. So yeah, God bless you. Amen.